So this is the boot sequence. Uh, once you turn it on, just did a quick control off delete here. Uh, this is uh, after my configuration. It starts to first try to boot from the A drive, and then it starts to try to boot from the C drive, which is where everything is installed. And you can probably see that right there. Let's see if turning this off helps. That helps? That helps, yes. You can see the screen a little bit more. So we're going to have a look at what's on here. So this is the menu. As you can see, it is uh, the correct date and time, so all that's being held in well. So some of the options are DOS shell, uh, mono to CGA, CGA to mono, CGA games, movie reviews, BIOS setup parameters, Microsoft Diagnostics, NSSI, and mono games. So basically, this would not have been set up this way in the year 1986 because you have a 10 megabyte hard drive and nobody in their right mind is going to devote that much. Like, I think 30 or 40 percent of the drive is games. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I'm sure that the vast majority of this setup, there's no, there's no word processor on here, there's nothing. And that's what it would have been used for back in the day. So this is an unrealistic setup, but it's the year 2020, so you know, we can afford to play around with these old systems. So here's uh oh, get back here. This keep this keyboard is it's it's the it backslash is over here. Uh the um I keep hitting back this for backspace. It's 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 an eighty three key layout, so so there is all the stuff that's on there. So we have DOS games, utilities, uh I have um This is a text file that gives you debug commands to park the head, which is the last thing I'm going to be doing on this before I ship it out. And, yeah, so, you know, these are the games on it. It doesn't tell you how much they take up in each one, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of games on here, and a lot of them need CGA or greater to work. And as you may have noticed, this is a mono monitor, but if you go back to the menu system, I have created batch files that turn or run a program and emulate CGA uh, on a mono. So that's from F2, so you hit F2 on the menu, loads that up nicely, now in CGA emulation mode, and we can play some games. And that'll come up every once in a while because it's, sh it's shareware, so. And we are going to do what? We're going to play a CGA game, why not? So F4. Uh, we'll do Cross Country Canada because I know how to get out of that one. Because the other ones I don't. I just control out delete it. And then you'll notice there's no reset button. Uh, IBM was pretty optimistic that this is going to work. So apparently this game is really cool. I have not played it yet. So it's just going to be a quick demo. Basically that you can see uh, that CGA will work. Uh, I don't know if there is any. That's fine. No, I don't want to try again. No, let's play a new game. Start your trip. Is there a player two? No. Anyways, it's just more of a... Okay, look around. You are beside a restaurant. Uh, eat. You are too full to eat anymore. Okay, go. Go to truck. Open door. So apparently, uh, this game didn't actually come with a manual. You're kind of just supposed to figure it all out yourself. Oh, look, I'm outside my truck there. Um, that's not what I meant by exit. I think quit is the right word here. You're going to save first? No. So, like, you kind of have to figure it all out by yourself as well. So, that's, uh, I mean, that's neat. I will play with that a bit later. For the intents of this demo, it's not going to be a big deal. So, let's try to find another game. Uh, Oregon Trail is on here. I actually played this for a number of hours on this computer previously. And I had, uh, had a fun time with it. Anyways, this works. There's no need to play it. If you don't know what Oregon Trail looks like, it's an awesome game. You know, there's uh, ports, new ports called, uh, what is it, Oregon Trail. That's kind of cool. I like that game. 
it all started here. It's a historic game, not in the realm of this video. So let's say we want to play a mono game, but we're stuck in CGA mode. So I made another option here, F3, runs a batch file, takes CGA, puts it back into mono mode. And this way we can run mono applications such as, what do we have here, is there anything worth playing? Oh, there's a bunch, okay. Win, Loser, Draw, F15 Flight Simulator. Those, I don't know how to get out of those games once I start them, so I don't want to restart again. So what we're gonna do, F10 out of here. Look at some other stuff here. Movie reviews, I thought this was hilarious. I did, a number of years ago, I had uh, a Hyperion computer, and it came with, let's look at those, it's in that PC speaker, glory. So, it came with a bunch of discs, and a lot of them were for IBM compatibles, and a bunch of them were had cool stuff on them, so this is, exa this is an example of it, from August 1st, 1992. I am gravely disappointed that this does not have Mad Max. I have to do a search for F2. Keyword, I guess, Mad Max. Actually... Hear it scanning around in there. Nothing. Okay, did you know George Miller? Also, it's not in there. I wonder if, like, I don't know. Uh, it's an Axel Foley movie. Beverly Hills Cop is in here. Let's let's look for that. Suddenly, that just came into my mind. The '80s music, synth music, came in there. So. Out of a thousand movies. Uh, this is a shareware, so I mean, it might have. Oh, Beverly Hills Cop! Sweet! Alright, cool. 1984, yeah, I remember it being almost as old as me. So, cool, it gives you like uh, an outline of the movie, box office gross, alright, and the ratings of it and stuff like that. Anyways, it's something cool I found on the disc. Like, normally, it, again, you would not load this kind of stuff onto a hard drive. When you're when you have 10 megabytes and you've paid thousands of dollars for the 10 megabytes, you're not going to, you know, load it up with games. So, the heavily relied on supplementary diskette use. So, again, not entirely accurate in terms of the use that's on here, but all the software is old. I mean, I think this is the newest one uh, that came, that I've installed on here. It's from 92. Uh, Microsoft Diagnostics is also on here. Let's see, Ooh. 2400. You can actually. This one has a 2400 Bob modem inside. All right, so there's a Microsoft Diagnostics, which I pulled from DOS six, I think, or, or five, along with HiMem.sys, because I couldn't figure out the DOS 4.01, and yeah, so it's another 1992 piece of software. Just basically tells you a little bit about the computer itself. So. You can see that it has 286 and a 287, so there is a cool processor. Hercules mm, video card, DOS 4.01. Uh, it detects a game adapter, but I have no idea where it is. And again, we'll see that when we pull it apart, or either, rather we won't. Or maybe we will, and I, I, you will, and I won't. I just, I, I don't know. I couldn't find it. So here we are. Uh, so 360K for the primary. This guy right here. This is actually a boot disk. Uh, well, no, we won't do that. And yeah, so 1.44 megs, not natively supported in this. There is a program in, sorry, a line in the config sys that uh, runs a program that tricks this into thinking it's uh, 1.44. And it is, and it works. You can put 1.44s in there, format them, everything. But the BIOS doesn't natively support that. We should have a look at that right now. Uh, it's basically just G setup because this doesn't have its own BIOS we can get into. So, so the trick with this is sometimes when I do this and then I reboot it, it uh, it, it redetects this as a uh, a seven seven twenty k or something, and there's there's issues. So we're just gonna look at this. Yeah, all right. So it does see it as one point four four type one hard drive, six forty k of RAM, three three eighty four k expanded. And it has the correct date in there, monochrome, and Mothco processor is installed. So, we're, we're going to reboot now, but we're going to do without rebooting here. 
and restart because if the configuration gets screwed up, I want to know about it. And so it boots up really quickly. When you fire it on, it counts the RAM rather fast. So that's it. This is, this is the slowest point of the boot up process. It goes to this drive and it takes forever to figure out there's no disk in there. And then slowly gives the command to the hard drive to, you know, kind of wake up and there it is. It goes to the B drive for some reason. Unrecognized command and config sys. Okay, well, let's, let's have a look at that. See, so there it is. 2MA BIOS installed. A360K B was uh, 1.44 megs. So we're going to go out to DOS and check that. Make sure that it has, it has a 720K disk. But that's not, well, you know what? Let's get, uh... Here's a 1.44. Boot disk for my Armada laptop. Should be able to read everything that's on there. I mean, it'll read, but will it run it? And for the hell of it, let's run an SSI, which is already on the hard drive. This will just tell you a little bit more about the computer and what is in it, what is on it. Again, you wouldn't load this stuff onto the hard drive. But for demo purposes, you know, who's to say I can't put whatever I want on this drive? You know, it's mine. I bought it. Then we'll, uh, we'll, have, a, we'll have a look at installing the Norton Commander on here. It's uh, something that I can say I've never used. Turn this light back on, it's getting a bit dark outside. Uh, I mean, I've used it, I guess, ish. Uh, I've used the derivative, the, the Volkov Commander. That's what was available in the Eastern Bloc. And my summers were spent in Poland, and that's what I used. Uh, your system date is invalid. Uh, May 3rd, 2020. That is the correct date. Don't know what you're talking about. So, good. So it does work. It's pulling information from a high-density drive. And here, while it's doing that, we can have a look at it more closely. So 286 at 8 megahertz, 287 at 5 megahertz. These are the timings. BIOS date is uh, June 20th, 86. Primary adapter is 64 kilobytes of video memory to a Hercules, 1 meg of RAM. Uh, no hard drive, no hard drive, which is BS because obviously there's a hard drive in here. I think it doesn't detect uh, MFM stuff. Uh, and this DOS version 4, it's actually 4.01, the slightly better one. Uh, oh, isn't a keyboard not detected? Gee, I wonder what I'm doing with this then. Uh, it's an 83 key XT keyboard, so this computer will take both XT and AT. This is just, I had this one lying around, and it was labeled IBM. Okay, it is an IBM, and then that IBM was on there too. I was thinking of, like, taking this Zenith data systems out. I have an old uh, receipt printer and, like, cutting out carefully the IBM logo and sticking it on there, but, I mean... Maybe I don't know for aesthetics. I, I don't care. It's a I, it's a Zenith 11.5 inch mono with a not too bad burning, but you can you can see that there it, it has been used. I mean it's not a it's not a fresh new monitor. CPU performance. It's loading. Uh, this processor is not half as slow as the 28616. But, yeah, I guess like five-eighths of the way there. Anyways, that is that. The test of the drive was successful. Let's actually this program. Yes. And the other thing we were going to do is there was a... No, there was a error in the config sys. Oh yes, DOS equals high. I don't know if that's uh, if that's a valid command in DOS version four. So we're going to use Edlin. You know what? Before we use Edlin, let's copy the file over. Because Edlin is it, it's not easy to use. See, edit. My fingers always go to edit. Edlin. Config. Dot. S R S. All right, uh, show me what it is. Okay, I think to just delete it, you put D1 or 1D. I forgot. I literally just looked that up. D1, I think. Let's try it. Okay, list. Show me what you got. Yeah, I think it killed it. Okay. And then F6 to save. Entry error. Okay. It looks good. It just doesn't have that one. Okay, so that was the other... 
things that I was screwing around with uh, drive parameters to make this drive uh, read a 720, sorry, a 1.44. Before I found out that there is a 2MA BIOS.exe file out there that'll do it, I tried to manually convert it to work as a double density, which it did, no problem, but I couldn't format on it. So later on I found this utility. Anyways, uh, Q for, no, Q for quit, E for end and save, I think. That's what it works, yeah. Okay, so if you write Q, then you won't save it. Okay, let's see what it does. It's going to A. Okay, we kicked off the C. Good, so there's no more errors there. Yeah, and this, the, the quietness of the actual, I mean, the drive motor is loud, but the head searching is, is, is nice and quiet on this drive. I mean, these are very error prone. The fact that this one has absolutely no errors on it is just astounding. I mean, good. Uh, what else was I going to show you guys? I think that's it. Oh, right, we're going to install the Norton Commander. So let's install the Norton. Let's make sure we have enough room first. And the way to do that is check disk. Open this up. This is not an unboxing. This has already been opened before. Ten megs with ah 1.1 megs free. So I I don't know how much this takes up. Look at this manual. It's starting to yellow. Using the mouse. Yeah, there's no mouse on this thing. You can put one on here, but I didn't have an error correct one. So. Uh, what do we have here? Ooh, we have two. So something else is in here. Just some sort of plastic. Oh, cool. Alright. So there's that. There's a three and a half and a five and a quarter inch version of it. Uh, it looks like this is a double density. So I'm going to assume these are 360Ks because then why would there be two of them? Uh, you know what? We'll use the we'll use the big ones. I don't know if the software works. It, clearly, it's been opened before, and I don't really know how to use it. But it should be on here because I seem to remember older computers had this kind of stuff there. So clearly, the, oh yeah. So there's also DOS shell, but it's not the DOS shell you're probably remembering from DOS five. It's a bit older. Uh, but I've taken it out of, out of the out of the auto exec because it goes into my menu system. So let's. Um, yeah, let's get a, let's go ahead and install this. I'm also going to back up the boot files onto this onto this floppy. All right. Oh, that smells good. Oh, musty kind of like uh, what's that? It's a musty smell like glue. I, I guess it's the glue from the backing of this thing. Yeah, I don't know. Just like a papery, musty smell, but not in a bad way. In a kind of like a library book, but not really. Like there's other technological chemical smell. I, I can't really explain it. Describing smells is hard. Install. Let's do this. Select the source from A. Uh, yep, let's put it in NC. I have NU on here. I do have Norton Utilities on this computer, which was, I think, taken off that one, which were from like 1986 or something, or the discs that came with that 386 over there. Uh, yes. All right, nice little semi sort of graphical. I mean, Hercules does do, as you have seen, it can even emulate CGA, so, or three point, Windows 3.0, I can get that, I can get that on here, in CGA mode. So, yeah, I don't know, I would be, I don't have a mouse, I don't have a sound card, yeah, well, 3.0 wouldn't even have support for that, so. This is the thing about these, you don't want to leave these out anywhere, because they're, like, open. So just cover them up somehow. 
I find that these 360K, these low density discs are resilient. Like, they are much more resilient than the 1.2s. Same with the, well, not so much with these. But uh, we will now make a backup copy of your auto exec bat file. Okay. Okay, do it, and then. Copyright 1989. Okay, so right around when this, well, no, this was from 86, but still. Just I remember using the Volkov Commander, which was the, the Russian version of that, I think. It was Ukrainian, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's, uh, I remember looking through my friend's fi files, looking for games, and copying them on diskettes. But I would always just exit to DOS and do everything that way. I mean, I just, that's how I learned how to do it. I, I didn't have these fancy commanders. The only thing I used with Norton was Norton Antivirus. And Norton Ghost, I still use that to this day. Actually, I used it a few days ago to copy over an entire hard drive from a P4. So, useful, useful, they made a bunch of useful software. IMO. Okay, software has been installed. How much room do I have left? on the hard drive now. <laughs> 270 K. <laughs> less than a less than a low density floppy. Awesome. Okay, well, yeah, this this disc is full of nonsense, literally. I just want to see what changes it made to the auto exec bat file. They differ how. Oh, it added a path for it. Okay. Yeah, alright, I'll take it. And while I'm here, let me copy. Let me just make a. I think this is just a raw. Okay, this has the config sys. This has G setup. This is like a backup backup in case the battery dies and you've lost access to the G setup file on the hard drive because it's no longer recognized as a type 1. That's on there now. So what I'm going to do is make a directory called. Backup and copy to that. Yeah, getting the backslash key it takes me for a loop here. Otherwise, it's a pretty nice keyboard to type on. It's, uh, well, it's a Model F, so... Can't really go wrong with it. Okay, so uh, let's try the Norton Commander. Bad Commander file them. Oh, right, because we didn't restart it, because... Alright, let's just run the auto exec. I'm lazy. And it'll take me to my menu system, which probably would have taken less time to exit out of, but NC! I'm not sure why it kept the background of that. I guess yeah, those are shows you the hidden files on there. DOS, all the cool stuff that's in DOS. Let's run mem. Okay, so for 522k available in the base RAM, and looks like all of the extended RAM is available as well. Did we run the DOS shell? Yeah, let's run the DOS shell. Do so DOS shell from Norton Commander, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So that's what the old DOS shell used to look like. Uh, this copy disk is there, backup, fi backup fixed disk, okay, well, um, I don't feel like doing that, but... Yeah, copy C. Yeah, it's it, 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 how is it? I guess I guess spam. Oh hell, let's do it. Okay. And 
if I have these drives, or these discs here, they're failed Windows 95 installation discs. Well, some of them failed, but these are the good ones. So, I guess I'll label them as they go. Cue the fast forwarding, I'm not going to make you sit through this. So that was it. Uh, that was the entire hard drive backed up on. You can back up your whole hard drive on a floppy diskette. Maybe not one floppy diskette, but a whopping seven or like 6.2 or whatever. I mean, this one wasn't even full. Yeah, the, the entire hard drive's contents. Right here. I raise 50 and hold. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 1986. The last thing I wanted to demo was the hard drive LED in here versus what happens here. So if you run a quick check disk on it. See they're not really they're not really in sync. Something cool I noticed. Uh usually on MF um, on IDE drives, the IDE light was always the same as the integrated controller light. I, I have, maybe MFM works differently, I'm not sure. All right, time to park the heads. So we're gonna type all this stuff in. Now this moves the head to the landing zone so that during transport or these things are really fragile, these drives. Like I said, I'm very surprised there aren't any bad sectors on this and that it, for the most part, has been completely excellent and working. I mean, once in a blue moon you'll have to hit control alt delete on this computer after you restart it. Uh, I don't know why that is, but I don't know if that's the hard drive's fault or the ROMs or something, but... The hard drive itself, yeah, it's almost 40 years old at this point, and it works. You don't hear any horrid sounds coming to it from it. So here's what I understand. Do I have to type in G equals 100 now, or do I have to do that later? It's supposed to... Okay, so I think I just press enter, and then G equals 100. Yes, and then the computer freezes, and that's the head aligned. I mean, I'll open it up to check if that uh, stepper motor is, is is moved right into the into the last position. I have some experience with that. For the intents and purposes of this video, let's listen to the shutdown sound. Ah, VGA graphics! What a treat! And what a trip that was. This thing was slightly before my time. I had started out with 386s, very similar to this one with VGA graphics, but a mega memory, 40 megs of hard drive space, IDE. So I have repaired these in the past. Uh, they were, and they continue to be clunkier, bigger, slower, just chunkier, like the DOS is really you really gotta know what you're doing, and I'm not surprised that publishing houses have released books this thick about, you know, learn how to use DOS. Uh, you know, these are their commands and stuff like this, before the internet, of course. And, you know, these things were not cheap. That Norton book was 40 bucks, and 
Yeah, so it was it was a trip overall down memory lane. And I mean, just comparing these two generations of computers, they are about three years apart. But yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm I turn that one on, I'm 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 immediately at home with with how it works. You know, boots up into DOS with an IDE hard drive. Whereas this one makes all sorts of noises, <laughs> you know, cool noises, as I might add. But, you know, it just seems more, this is more of a, of a business machine, you know, well, IBM. Uh, you know, it's, it, you, you can load games on there, but you have a very limited amount of hard drive space, and those hard drives weren't entirely reliable. So your best friend was one or more of these disk banks, appropriately named disk bank. And that is how you had the PC experience in the 80s. Anybody using a Commodore 64 without a hard drive would know that. Uh, you know, 286s generally did have some kind of hard drives. XTs, not so much so, not always. So it was a bunch of floppy swapping. And it's kind of neat to revisit that, that, that era of computing. And, the, well, the mid-80s. And as, in terms of uh, what I thought about this, I mean... This computer constantly told me to wait, be patient, loading, dot, 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 right? Um, this one sort of kind of does that, but this one really, really requires patience. I mean, I remember it, the Ma Apple IIEs in the computer labs in, in grade school, you know, kids were be like, it loads faster. Like, I almost caught myself doing that on this thing a couple times. No, you, ju you just gotta wait. You, like, you, you literally just gotta wait and let the computer do its thing. Because it's running at 10 megahertz and it has to do some things before, you know. I mean, there's, there's lights on the front at least that tell you that something's happening, you know, the noises from the floppy drives indicate that something's loading. But there are times where it's just kind of like, you know, and if it wasn't for the, you know, please be patient message on the screen, you'd be like, okay, control, I'll delete. Uh, totally different experience from today's computers. Uh, noticeable difference between these two, even. Would say and they're both 16-bit processors that's a 386 16 SX I mean internally it's a 32-bit but uh, they are actually comparable machines so what else uh, did we discover today uh, the keyboard layout is funky I'm very happy to be using a 101 key again like I turned this one on immediately it doesn't have that tactile feedback that I mean it's kind of almost cheap in comparison to this. Uh, you know, it's got the same design as, uh, as a Model M, perhaps, but it's not the same. You know, the tactile feel on this is, is, is nice. So the, other, the only other thing that uh, was interesting to me is the pre-VGA graphics, because I grew up with VGA, and this one had originally a CGA card, but I don't have a CGA monitor. Uh, I did have EGA at some point as well. Uh, very, 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 very early. Actually, after my first computer, I built a computer with EGA. So I'm familiar with it. I kind of like it. I uh, really wish I had one now. But uh, yeah, mono was the way to go back in the day for typing, for applications, not necessarily for gaming. Like until I found that mono to CGA program in my stack of disks over there, um, because it's a Hercules, it can emulate CGA. But if it was a real IBM mono, pff, no, you're screwed. That's text only, and that's how you're going to, that's what you're stuck with. So, yeah, the takeaways are that be patient, uh, notice the generational gap of stuff, like it was a completely different world of computing, the manual was your friend, the reference guide, and basically just, I mean, I don't know how millennials, and technically one too, would deal with one of these things, you know, today. It's, it's, it's crude, it's noisy, it's slow, but it is a piece of history, and that piece of history is going to be boxed up because once again, it's already not mine. So, I will see you on the next interesting video. Hopefully you find it interesting. If not, at least my 93 subscribers now will be like, cool, I like it. So, like and subscribe, and do zobaczenia w następnym odcinku.